This video will show you how to test and if necessary replace the STW20 NK50Z MOSFET that is used in all of the Spectratec amplifiers. This includes the PA1, PA2, PA3, SPA4, and SPA5 amplifiers. For the purposes of this video, a short circuit has been placed across the power connections of the amplifier which will give the same indications when the unit is tested as though the transistor has failed. Because this is a good unit, the transistor has not actually failed, but it is a good one. To start the test, you will need a meter set on the ohms position and the amplifier should be disconnected in order to test the amplifier, set your multimeter to the ohms position and turn the sounder or the beeper on so that when the test probes are connected together, the meter will read zero and you will have a beep indicating that you have continuity between the leads. The STW20NK50Z is located on the large heat sink on the amplifier. Place one of the terminals of probes of the meter, doesn't matter which one, on the center screw of the small green connector that holds the transistor in place. Touch the other probe to the terminal that is closest to the large coil. If the meter sounds like this, you get continuity and the meter shows very near zero ohms, that's an indication that the transistor has failed. When these transistors fail, they fail completely shorted. Now I will remove the short circuit that was connected across the amplifier terminal leads temporarily. And this is what you will see in here if you have a good transistor. Again, placing the probe on the center lead and touching the outside lead, the meter shows no continuity. This is correct. If you go between the outside lead or outside terminal and the far outside terminal on the green, green uh, terminal block, you will read about 12 and a half to 13 ohms. That is the correct value. That's what you're supposed to read uh, when the amplifier is working normally. When the transistor fails, very typically the reading will be zero ohms on all three of the terminals, no matter how it's measured. If you see that, then that indicates that the transistor has failed. So that now we will go about replacing the transistor. In order to replace the transistor, it's necessary to remove the circuit board from the mounting brackets that affix the board to the heat sink. One caution, the heat sink is bolted to the driver's transistor here. And if that gets wiggled too much, it will break the leads where they go into that little green terminal strip and it will be necessary to replace the RRF740 transistor on the heat sink. So be careful not to bend that back and forth and break it. Before the board can be removed, it's necessary to loosen the three mounting screws that clamp the leads of the transistor to the terminal block. Loosen the, the screws about three or four turns to allow plenty of clearance so that the new transistor will fit easily. Using a screwdriver and a pair of pliers if necessary, remove the nuts from the mounting bracket. Notice I didn't take the screw out yet. I'm using it to retain the board so it doesn't twist sideways. This one's a little tight, so I'm going to use a little small wrench and hold it, and now I can get it free. Okay, now that it is free, carefully pick the board up, drop the screws out. Now you can lift the board off carefully, remembering that you have the wires that go to the fan on the heat sink here. You don't want to break those off. If you want to, before you start this procedure, you can cut the tie wrap that holds the wire in place on the circuit board and carefully unplug the white connector. That will allow you to totally separate the board from the heat sink assembly. Now that the heat sink is free, You'll notice that the transistor, the leads are bent at right angles. You're going to have to make the new transistor look the same way. Now the mounting screw that holds the transistor in place 
is fitted for either a slot screwdriver or a cross point screwdriver. However, I found that the slot screwdriver works much better and allows you to get a better grip on the screw. So that's my recommendation. This screw is tightened fairly tight because the transistor must be held in tight contact with the heat sink in order to properly uh, dissipate the heat. So we'll discuss that when we put the transistor back on. So go ahead and put the screwdriver in here, unscrew the screw, remove it. It's a long screw. You've got quite a, quite a bit of thread to remove. Take it off, set the heat, uh, set the uh, screw and the washer aside. Now, the transistor is actually stuck to the heat sink, or it's stuck to the thermal pad that's attached to the heat sink. So now we will go about uh, getting that loose. The best way to do this is to take a pair of pliers and gripping the transistor on its sides gently and don't jam it down against the heat sink. You don't want to damage the little white thermal pad in here. That's critical to the operation of the system. Grip the transistor and carefully rock it back and forth a little bit. And if all goes well, it will pop free of the thermal pad. Now, in this case, because this transistor or this thermal pad has been used a number of times, you will notice there is a little bit of material that's caught on the pad on right here. Now that is material that has been torn free of the thermal pad. And in fact, if you look at the pad carefully, you can see the material has been removed from it slightly. In this case, that's not enough to cause a problem. If it were a large amount of material that had been taken off, say in this area down here, where this is the area where the transistor gets the hottest, if material has been lost in that area, then it's necessary to put a new thermal pad in place. Okay, so now we've got the transistor off and we now have to see about putting a new one. Okay, now we need to discuss the leads. This is a defective transistor, which I removed from an amplifier previously, and I straightened the leads back out. This is a brand new transistor which has never been used. I'm going to place one over the other and you can see the difference in the lead lengths. The new transistor has longer leads. So what you have got to do is to take the new transistor and remove using a pair of needle nose or a pair of uh, cutters, remove about three millimeters from the end of, of the leads. If you don't take that little bit off, then the transistor will not fit on the circuit board properly. What will happen is when the transistor goes into the terminal block, it will jam against the back of the block. That will bend the leads backwards, possibly short circuiting to, this, to the heat sink and damaging the transistor. So it's necessary to do uh, this little bit of trimming work. After you have the transistor leads trimmed, then you need to take a pair of needle nose pliers and holding the transistor carefully, you want to bend the leads at right angles. You can see there's a little bit of a gap right there. You don't want to get right to the area where the transistor becomes, where the leads become larger, but you want to get it right before that point and you want to bend them at right angles. Okay, there we go. The leads are now bent at right angles. So that transistor is now ready for installation on the heat sink. Before we install the transistor, a word about cleanliness. It's very important that the transistor surface and the heat sink and the thermal pad be clean before the transistor is installed. If you're replacing the thermal pad, then you've got to make sure that the surface of the heat sink is clean and smooth. I will use a little bit of pure isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free cloth, clean the back of the transistor, set it down so it can dry. In this case, I'm simply going to clean the surface of the thermal pad to make sure that it is clean. After it is dry, 
and you can dry it. You can use a cloth to dry it off. After it is dry, the transistor can be put back in position on the thermal pad, and the screw can be reinstalled. Now, in order to reinstall the screw, after you have it screwed down, so you've taken up all of the slack, you want to make sure that the pins of the transistor line up parallel with the fins on the heat sink. That will make it go into the uh, terminal block easier. Now you need to take your flat blade screwdriver and you need to crank it down, tighten it up pretty tight. The manufacturer recommends a fairly high torque value. If you can move the transistor at all by grabbing it and twisting it, you don't have it tight enough. So make sure you've got it tight. Now we're going to reattach the circuit board to the heat sink. Now the heat sink should go back on the same way that it came off. And normally that is with the brackets on the top of the circuit board. If you look here on the edge, you can see that with the bracket on the top of the circuit board, the leads will go directly into the, the terminal block. And that's exactly what you want to do. Once you've got it in there, stand the amplifier up on the heat sink and insert the mounting screws. Put the two mounting screws in. And lay the amplifier on its side. And reinstall the two nuts clamp the amplifier circuit board to the heat sink. Make sure you do not pinch the wire for the fan between the circuit board and the mounting bracket or that will cause the fan, not only the fan will not work, but you will also cause the 12 volt regulator on the circuit board to fail. After you have the screws back in place, go ahead and tighten up the screws so that the circuit board doesn't move. In this case, I'm using a small wrench just to hold the nut so that it doesn't twist when I'm tightening it up. Now that that's done, turn the amplifier back over and tighten up the three mounting screws that make connection to the transistor itself. These don't have to be screwed down super tight. You just want to make sure that they do clamp the leads in place. If you turn them too tightly, it's possible to strip them out. Okay, after that's done, that completes the repair. The amplifier is ready to go. If you wish to make a Another test with the ohmmeter to verify that it is correct. You can do that, but you should be ready to go at this point. So that's all that is involved in changing the STW20NK50Z on the Spectratech amplifiers.